This video is about the element chromium. It's part of a group of videos I've made concerning the periodic table elements. I research and edit all my videos with the goal of making science visually interesting, understandable, and even beautiful. This video briefly examines chromium's discovery, properties, atomic structure, uses, and biologic importance. In 1761, a red mineral was found in the Ural Mountains and was given the name Siberian Red Lead. Although the mineral contained the element lead, it also contained a new element, which the French chemist Louis Vauquelin was able to isolate in 1797. He also found traces of this new metal in rubies and emeralds. Because these minerals were so colorful, the new element was given the name chromium after the Greek word chromo for color. Chromium, which is believed to form as a result of stellar explosions, is a shiny metal, reflecting most of the visible and ultraviolet light that falls on it. Chromium is a transition metal with atomic number 24. Compared to iron, it's 11% less dense and melts at a temperature 369 degrees centigrade higher. Chromium is the hardest of the periodic table metals. It will scratch quartz and glass. Only the semi-metallic boron and carbon as a diamond are harder. Chromium is brittle. While you can hammer the very ductile gold into extremely thin sheets, chromium will shatter when struck with a hammer. The CR symbol for chromium serves as a reminder of the metal's high corrosion resistance. Chromium readily combines with oxygen and forms a thin, impermeable oxide layer that protects the underlying metal from further oxidation. Iron also forms an oxide layer, but this layer is permeable to oxygen, so the oxide layer grows and the iron rusts. It's interesting that if you heat chromium, more oxygen will react and the oxide layer will thicken. This thickness increase is on a nanometer scale and results in coloration of the chromium due to what's called thin film interference of light. This same colorful phenomenon can be seen with thin oil films and soap bubbles. It's important to note that the colors seen are related to the thickness of the chromium oxide film, not to colors of different chromium compounds. The chromium atom always has 24 protons in its nucleus. It can have different numbers of neutrons, but over 80% of naturally occurring chromium atoms have 28 neutrons. The innermost five electron shells contain 18 electrons arranged as those of the noble gas argon. Chromium has six additional electrons, five in the 3D shell and one in the 4S shell. These six outer electrons are considered valence electrons and can be shared with other elements. When chromium combines with oxygen or other elements, its electronic configuration changes such that certain frequencies of visible light will be absorbed and others reflected. This occurs because only specific visible wavelengths trigger quantum jumps in chromium's electrons. Thus, chromium compounds take on a wide variety of colors depending on which wavelengths are absorbed and which are reflected. Chromium is too brittle to have much application as a construction material by itself, but its hardness and corrosion resistance is highly valued in electroplating applications. Chrome plating not only protects underlying steel from oxidation, it's also very beautiful. Another major use of chromium is in stainless steel production. Stainless steel is an alloy of iron that contains at least 10.5% chromium. The addition of chromium hardens the steel and imparts great corrosion resistance. It has wide applications. You don't need to paint your car if it's made from stainless steel. The Tesla company has developed its own unique stainless steel that I suspect contains a relatively high amount of chromium. This stainless steel sculpture in Chicago is polished to a very high shine 
and reflects the city's skyline. Chromium is never found alone in nature, but often in colorful ores. Rubies are an aluminum oxide mineral given their red color by very small amounts of chromium. Emeralds exhibit their green color because of small amounts of the elements chromium and vanadium. Chromium oxides, chlorides, and chromates show dramatic colors as paint pigments. A popular green pigment in the 1800s was the arsenic-containing Paris green. When the less toxic chromium oxide, viridian green pigment, was patented in 1859, it came into popular use. Van Gogh loved the chromium-based paints and used viridian in this painting of a cafe and chrome yellow in his painting of sunflowers. Chromium produces allergic contact dermatitis in 1-3% to of the human population, putting it behind only nickel and cobalt in this type of metal toxicity. Although most chromium compounds have relatively low toxicity, some are extremely toxic. Chromium trioxide, which is used in electroplating, is a very reactive and strong oxidizing agent. All six of chromium's outer electrons are shared with oxygen in this form of hexavalent chromium. Adults normally have 14 milligrams of chromium in their body. That's less than 20% of the mass of this baby aspirin. Although the mechanism of a biologically beneficial role of chromium is not clear, there is some evidence it plays a positive role in glucose metabolism. It's debatable whether chromium is essential for nutrition, but we absorb it in our food and it's often included in multivitamins. Finally, let me share a fun visual image I use to remind me of chromium and its compounds. I picture this old Buick with chrome-plated bumper and probably chromium-containing green paint. I also picture Van Gogh as a reminder of chromium paint pigments. It's even more fun to think of Van Gogh driving the Buick on a day trip to the stainless steel bean in Chicago. The day trip thought reminds me of Chromium's atomic number. If you enjoyed this video, please like and consider subscribing.